Hello everyone and welcome back to my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode I'm going to begin by bringing the nuclear lander here, atomic lander or whatever you want to call it, back to Kerbin with its science so that we can unlock more technologies but we're going to be keeping it in orbit around Kerbin because well it really doesn't have the ability to land, it doesn't have any parachutes at least and so we will just have a Kerbal fly out to it, grab the science, and then come back. I don't think we're going to have it dock at a station because, well, I want to take some time to construct the station. I don't want to rush the job. So let's just uh, get to Kerbin, see what we can do. We should also refuel it so the vehicle that the Kerbal launches with to meet up with it, to rendezvous, will carry some fuel so that we can refuel this as well so that it can proceed to other locations maybe I don't know, uh, would it reset the experiments though? I guess it wouldn't. This will have to dock with a station so that we can reset the experiments. That's right. Hmm. Anyway, let's just get to, one way or another we're gonna have to get to curve and orbit. So let's just go there. Okay, so here we go. Gear up. We're probably way far out now. Yep, we're on escape trajectory. That's fine. That's pretty much what I want to do anyway. Okay, let's get into orbit around. Well, shall we get a tighter orbit around Eve? I mean, we could uh, burn from here. What What's our orientation like? So, going from Eve to Kerbin, we want Kerbin ahead of us. Yeah, we want Kerbin ahead of us by 36 degrees, so we're going to have to wait a while. Might as well wait in this, this wide orbit so that we can time warp properly. Okay, we are departing Gilly. Now I think we can just zoom out and wait for the time to intercept... Uh, Kerbin. Okay, we've got uh, 18,000 kilometers. Probably need some sort of mid course plane change to bring us closer to Kerbin. This is about as good as it gets from here. Okay, let's see how close we've got. Alright, well we pretty much hit it. So, mid-course plane change. Not so much a plane change as just an adjustment maneuver. Okay, departing Eve's sphere of influence. Heading out to mid-course plane change. Okay, now it looks like a minimum from here. We will make further adjustments in Kerbin's sphere of influence. Now, if we are going to have this dock up with a station eventually, we should probably get into a nice equatorial orbit rather than well, what it's in right now. So targeting the moon to get the orientation right. Gotta go inclination and radial. Get close in. And level. This doesn't look like we've got periapsis. Okay, there we go. That's about as close as I can get the inclination from out here, I think. Let's just focus on bringing it in. Alright. Now, fine-tuning. I think I should look up error breaking calculator just for the heck of it. Looks like we need about 33,400.
That should be all right. I like it a little bit loose, actually. We're going to end up with a pretty severe inclination as it is, so looser the better to correct that inclination. All right. So panels in, I think. Okay, we are configured for error breaking. Okay, here we go. We don't want to land with this thing. We want to make sure we get into a nice orbit. Right now, not so much a nice orbit. Mm, looks like we've got... How much of an inclination do we have? Let's see. 24 degrees. Yep. Not what we want, but... Anyway, let's let uh, Kerbin do its thing. Okay, that's orbit. I wonder if we could deflect our way to a different inclination. Would this be the right way to do that? Probably not. Something a little bit more aerodynamic would be able to do that. But this is more like a solid lump hitting the atmosphere here. And we're headed back up. Okay, inclination burn is pretty hefty, but we're gonna refuel this soon, so not worried about burning fuel. Might as well get into a good inclination so it can match with other stuff. Let's go. 24 degrees or so. Should get solar panels out again. Okay, looks like I've got the uh, 0.5, 0 0.6 0 .6 degree inclination, but that'll be all right. Uh, I want to pull the orbit a little bit in. We've got the uh, periapsis here at 194 kilometers, and I think circularizing at that should be a good, good altitude for our station. Okay, looks like it'll cost about 390. Let's see, where are we? 197 by 194, let's say. That's good enough for me. It's a little bit of an inclination, but that's all right. Remember, this isn't the station's actual altitude. We're going to be a little bit off from this anyway. Okay, so let's go back to the Space Center and talk about building a station. So first we need some station building technology, and I believe the main thing I wanted was the large docking ports and of course this hub so let me get that let's see now anything else essential for station building that's not really no could use these guys remote guidance units but we don't have the science for it all we really have is uh, the science for this or this oh well I guess the cupola module would be nice wouldn't it but maybe I should reserve the science I've got for some of these other things. Now we gotta have a cupola module. Let's let's go with that. Okay. So with that, I will turn to the VAB, put something together, and show you what I've got. Okay, everyone. This is Station Module One. It's pretty simple. It's just a cupola module, hitchhiker. Can uh, canister and the science lab. It doesn't have much propul- well it really just only has RCS. It doesn't have propulsion of its own. It does have a uh, SAS module, a uh, reaction wheel, and of course a large docking port on this side. So it's gonna have to have some support, lots of support. It barely has- it's got these tiny little solar panels and some batteries, but that's about it. So we're going to have to definitely connect it up to much more than this and Certainly, it's not possible for the atomic lander to dock with this, so I'm going to send one Kerbal up with it, because I don't have, uh, what you call it, uh, one of these uh, remote controllers, the probe parts, probe cores. I don't have one on the, on the station, so we're going to have to send at least one Kerbal up. I think Frobart. Frobart will be our first 
station manager. All right, so let's take it out to the launch pad and see how it goes. Okay, and this is going to be launched on the OVX, of course. And the benefit of uh, doing things this way, first of all, is that all of the you know places where you live in are joined together. So all of the all of the living spaces, and of course we can add more living spaces, but uh, mainly I wanted to make sure that these are all connected together and that uh, more of the utility facilities are are elsewhere on different modules. Alright, so Frobar Kerman with the with the station. Now it's not going to be able to get to the required orbit actually, it'll be short of that. Yeah, so it's going to have to wait until the next module meets up with it in order to uh, dock with it and push it up. Alright, so here we go. Frobart sort of has an interesting look to him. What's the IVA look like? Oh, it's like this, yeah. It's an interesting view, isn't it? Maybe I should put a roll in. Okay, the center engine is cut out. Well, there we go. This has more of a feel of a spaceship now, doesn't it? Of course, there's still no avoiding the fact that I need to turn to the map to see my apoapsis. So here we go. This is what coasting to Apoapsis looks like from in here. Okay, we are in a nice little orbit here. 84 by 85. Don't need to be in cockpit mode right now. I think it is a good idea to extend solar panels. And then release Frobart Kerman so that he can do his stationary duties. There we go. Station is in orbit. Now the other piece. We have to bring this back down, right? So let us plot for that. All right, let's go for this retro burn. And where are we? It's pretty close. All right, that's that's what I'll go for. We will see how it ends up on the other side. Okay, we're going to need to retro burn quite a lot. Obviously high, but also steep. Gotta deploy parachutes. Uh, here, yeah. That looks pretty good. Now I have been reminded to apply SAS to help maintain stability. Not so much with this particular one because this one is quite stable, but some of the other designs I have could definitely use some SAS stability on touchdown. So once the parachutes deploy, I should just go with SAS. Okay, full parachute deployment, SAS on. And I'll wait until we get about 200 meters to uh, slow us down even more than this.
Okay, we are down on the ground, nice and safe, pretty close, pretty close, well actually a little bit further away than I thought we were, but hey, uh, about uh, 1.2 kilometers away from the landing beacon, very nice. Alright, let's recover this thing. Okay, 98% of the full value back, 96,000 funds, hardly cost anything at all to launch that thing, let's launch another module. Okay, and here we have Station Module 2, which is which actually has a sort of makeshift nose cone on top of it because I was feeling sort of guilty about the fact that we had a blunt surface facing facing the atmosphere here. So I, I added a little nose cone, it'll be detached, and it's got a parachute on top because I actually hate the look of this nose cone. It just doesn't look good at all. So I figure this looks better, and uh, so we'll pretend it'll parachute back down and it'll be a reusable nose cone if you will but this is the actual module down here and it's got a uh, mark 2 lander can so we're gonna be sending up one more Kerbal it's got uh, some healthy amount of monopropellant maybe I shouldn't add these other monopropellant tanks but it will have to do the docking with the with the what you call it uh, first module and so we hope that we have lots of torque and we do no problem there and of course this module is the hub. This is where things dock to it. Uh, but mainly more modules, right? Because we're going to build it up. And then, But one of the modules that will dock with it is for smaller docking facilities with the, with the standard docking ports. And so we're going to be able to dock standard stuff with it, including of course the, the atomic lander that we've got waiting up there. But mainly this is supposed to help out with uh, refueling stuff and also boosting the whole station up. Alright, so uh, we'll probably add another fuel container off to the side on one side here, but we can't do too much. There is a capacity for the OVX launcher and we can't overrun that capacity. So we have to do things sort of piecemeal and that's what's happening here. And for this module we are going to send up uh, Gus Free Kerman. I don't remember using him much. Gus Free Kerman will go up. Alright, so save and launch. Okay, so uh, here we go. That looks pretty good. And so throttle up and away we go. What does Gus Free's IVA look like? Ah, this sort of thing. That's not too bad, is it? Well, it will depend on how it looks once we start uh, start our pitch maneuver. Okay, let's take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, it's sideways again. We need to... Uh, which way would it be better to roll? Oh, 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 oh. Don't go to... Oh. Okay, that's not too bad, is it? Okay, I uh, center engine cut out. I, I don't seem to see our altitude, so I'm messing up here a bit. Nope. It's just the lander can, after all, I guess. We don't get... Uh, good altitude reading in those. I mean, radar altitude you get, but not... Uh... Whoa, this thing... Got a lot of sideways component here, come on. Now this is good actually, because you know what, now we can use that nuclear stage, because the nuclear stage is going to be able to dock up and re refuel without uh, returning to the surface, so easily with the station. So that's going to be a positive. Okay, I'm going to detach the nose cone now. So, so uh, decouple that decoupler off. Okay, so hopefully the nose cone parachute deployed and it'll be able to uh, re-enter safely. Gus Free is excited, as well he should be. I've picked a sort of unusual rust color for the for the station.
I just did that on a whim, but maybe you'll suggest some sort of name for the station. I haven't come up with one yet. You know, I think I forgot to put batteries on Gus Free's little thing. That's gonna be a problem. Okay, 81 by 84. Did I put batteries with Gus Free or not? I mean, he's got 100 electric charge there, but I don't think he's got batteries. He's got these tiny little solar panels, not much. I'm gonna have to turn his lights off. But anyway, uh, let's decouple away from him. Oh, can't really see him very well. Whoops. Well, anyway, he's, he's off there. Let's go back to the other vehicle. And once again, we need to deal with this. Wow, he's only got 100 electric charge. He's gonna have an interesting time docking with that other vehicle, uh, the first module of the station. But let's deal with this first, because this will also run out of electric charge, and it doesn't have solar panels. Okay, we'll go for that. Maybe a little bit lower. Okay. Alright. Okay, I think we're either spot on or a bit under. I've targeted the KSC already. We're a bit under. Well, we're not going to end up as close as we did on the last try and not as close as I would like but since I'm in a hurry to try and connect the two modules of the station together so that we can move on I think uh, I think I can accept this uh, accept this uh, result 40 kilometers away from the KSC not great Oh, oh, okay. Bit of a slope. But it remains stable. Alright, recover vessel. Okay, no science, but uh, we got 96.2% uh, of our value back. Almost 95,000 funds. Let's work on getting the modules docked up, and then I'll call it an episode and continue next time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost this module up a bit so that the other one can sort of come around and and catch up with it so that's the plan right now uh, what's our inclination just a point two inclination difference so nothing much to fix there okay gotta be spare with our electric charge because that's not something we can replenish easily with this thing Okay, let's activate the engines. Start this off. Afor unfortunately, these rockets do not replenish our electric charge. It should be enough. Yeah, I think that'll be a fine, fine way to go. Let's time warp some so that the first module can catch up with us. Okay, here we go. I think we've got our our timing now. Yep. Really, 2.5 was the best I could do there. Alright, let's just go around. I don't want to waste any time. Okay. Got a difference of 79 meters per second with the target. We're on the dark side, unfortunately. Uh, I'll risk putting the lights on, I think. Got to remember to turn them off, though. Soon. Let's see, how far away are we? Okay, yeah, we should be doing this. Can we wait for daylight, maybe? Yeah, I think we can wait for daylight. Probably the safest thing to do right now. 
Okay, we've got uh, electric charge full now. Let's turn on the lights. Now we'll have to do some rotating because I've actually got all the all the ladder rungs lined up. So there's a very particular orientation that we need. We need to make sure these are lined up with the rungs on the other module. Okay, yeah, that's about right. Let's just get them both lined up. Yep, that's the general idea. Let's get this going here. There we go. Okay, double check. Everything all nice and lined up. Uh, maybe two degrees off. Let's fix that. Otherwise I'm going to make a lot of people mad, I think. Now, how far is it away that I have to be before I redock? Did we get it? I think we're lined up now. Well, better than before. Maybe a little bit off, but uh, better than before. All right. So, here we go. We've got this all connected up. We've got curls on board all over the place. And in the next episode, I'm going to start by boosting it up into a proper orbit, a uh, higher orbit, and then we're going to add a new module to it or two, and then dock the science lander to it so that Kerbals can retrieve the stuff. We need a vehicle to bring Kerbals back down. We'll look into that. So, all that coming up, uh, but I'll have to leave it here. So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.